engineers. So, yes. Yes. Yes, now we have sound. A warm welcome to all electronic makers, engineers, hobbyists, professionals out there. This is the fifth part of our lab talk. This is Matthias Clausen from the Electro Lab. Our editor in chief, Jens Nickel. And yeah, today's topic I think might be quite interesting. Short circuit or short circuits. So um, yeah, first let's have a look at the winners of the last stream, the winners for the Raspberry Pi Pico W. This. Yep, that should it be. Uh, once. Nope. Only a few buttons left. <laughs> no, the button to right. The other left, the other left. <laughs> so, um, uh, so. Ah, yes. Just take the right button or get a set of uh, student glasses. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they are too small. <laughs> so, yep. Yeah, uh, congratulations. If you haven't received a message from us, please get in contact with our support, electros, uh, support electro.com. Um, and um, leave please your shipping details because the way that YouTube works, um, for us it's hard to get in contact with if the winner are just within the chat. So yeah, we need yeah, a way to, to get your shipping errors because we like to ship the product if it's arriving. Um, at the moment, the I'm, I'm not sure what the Pico W is currently doing, but they haven't shown up as far as I understood. So. But uh, as soon as they will arrive, you are the first five uh, to get one from the warehouse. And yeah, and of course, for this uh, show, we also have giveaways. And now I can press this button. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, the giveaway for this one is um, an Velleman mini PC oscilloscope. So it's a small portable uh, unit you can attach to a an, an laptop and do first measurements. It's not fast, so 200 kilohertz mm -hmm. sample rate, but for mm -hmm. a first or for, for a small on the go on or on, on your trip, first diagnosis, it's really nice. Um, Windows software for this is uh, available and we will pick one winner. And this is now done a little bit different. We have set up a page for registration. I will drop the link in the chat. Uh, so, sorry. Um, so, for those who want to win one, they have to register with email address and name? Yes, so mm -hmm. the minimum amount of uh, required information to ship that mm -hmm. to you. So, um, link is in the chat. Um, it's available um, yeah, during the stream. So, if you like to participate, during the live stream, that's not a problem. If you view the stream afterwards and not live, we are sorry, but yeah, being live on the show may have some benefits. So besides be able to chat with us if you like to. And yeah, so that's the way um, that makes it a lot easier to ship the products to you. And uh, so we are able to, to get it even in a timely manner to you. So head over if you like to have one and otherwise uh, we have prepared a small nice show for you this evening. Um, let's start with the first topics. Yeah. Um, we have a promotion and a sponsor for this one and this is, uh, you may know it, Joyt, one um, of, uh, yeah, one of also the brands we have in the Electro Store. And oh, preparation, sometimes. I can see two devices. G give me yeah. a second. Uh -huh. um, yeah, some, some, some little hiccups um, at this point. Uh, uh, sometimes preparation is everything, I think. Um, so, um, yeah. 
Uh, you may, if you have read Electron, may know Joyt. We have done a lot of reviews with them. They are now kindly sponsoring and supporting this show. Um, they have been a good partner for a long time and also they are for makers and professionals. They are offering a lot of products from modules, Raspberry Pi add-ons, um, educational products and also individual development services. So um, if you're interested in, um, Joyet will definitely have all what your electronic needs are. So check out their product catalog at the site uh, joyet-it.net link in the description below and also for your measuring devices have a look at the dmso 2d72 and review is also in the link in the description and um, also the lcr t7 a small well-priced versatile utility for capacity resistance and inductance measurements and also transistor testing um, also available at the electro store from joyet um, Yep, have a look at that. We yep, have also the review for that device in the description below. Yeah, and here we come to the devices. Um, both are in the Electro shop. Both are in the Electro shop. Yes. Both are available. As I said, if you like one, head over to the reviews mm -hmm. to get yourself a picture of what these devices are capable of. I think it's the best to read about it and then decide if you like it. And if you want to order it, go to one of their distributors of your choice. Yeah. So Matthias, um, and we come to my part, uh, the next um, magazine, the next magazine edition. Yes. Uh, when I say the next, it's already the, the current magazine edition because my colleague Diane, she uploaded today all the files. Yes. Uh, so you, so for those of you um, who are Electro members, you can download the PDF uh, in four different languages. Um, yeah, we have it in, in English, uh, German, Dutch and French. And you can also um, download um, different articles. And when I say different articles, we have a lot in this magazine. It's extra thick. It's 140 pages strong. Um, yeah, like we had had in in the past, um, we had this famous semiconductor guide in German. It was Halbleiter Heft. It was always very popular because um, the people could find a lot of interesting circuits, um, preferably analog without software. And um, yeah, and this time we have a new uh, semiconductor guide called, we called it summer circuits because it's summer and there are a lot of circuits. So we have 140 pages and we have over 50 uh, different projects and you can download them all as um, small PDFs. For those who are not Electro members, you can get um, um, edition at the newsstand sales uh, beginning of August. So next week uh, it's also on at the newsstand sales. And as I said, it's full of projects. I'm not the best one learning things by heart. Um, we have um, chargers in there. We have um, a um, button-free door control. Um, we have um, different testers. We have a DC-DC boost converter in there. Yeah, and we have also prepared a sheet um, with um, with um, components, uh, with, uh, with the content page. Yeah. <coughs> okay, that's down there. Um, <coughs> here you can see the cover and you can see a small view of the website. There you can see a long list of articles. And here we have the content page. It was a hard job for our uh, graphics department to get all the titles <laughs> in there. Uh, we left the subtitles away this time. Yeah, and um, in the top left, there's an interesting um, circuit. It's a US style siren. It's a relaunch of, a, of an old um, circuit. And we have a nice PCB as an offer together with a nice stand. Um, 
Yeah, and it's um, yeah, it's really uh, nice to solder all the components, and then you have a, a thing which will be also very popular for your children, of course. Um, it's in our shop, and yeah, you can see some other um, circuits there. Um, yeah, a nice thing is also our cover. Yeah, we can see it in the yeah in the button. Here in, on this page, um, yeah, it's from Kelly Eaton. Actually, she's an U.S. American artist, um, and it's an artwork of her. She makes a lot with components, um, electronic components. Um, yeah, and if you want to see um, her um, circuit garden, or if you want to have um, Yeah, if you want to see uh, how Vladimir Putin is hiding behind an uh, operational amplifier, you should immediately uh, get the edition. Yeah, and yeah, um, we will talk about that in an upcoming stream. Yes, about the edition, in also the about lab talk. Yeah, also about the circuits that are in there a little bit more in, in depth mm -hmm. and in detail, because then everybody may has a chance to grab a copy. Mm -hmm. And also maybe prepare small hidden gems for the next stream for this mm -hmm. summer circuit edition. So you also made two circuits, a DC, DC booster and uh, a dice. And, and a small dice without mm -hmm. an MCU, also in classic yes. circuits. Yeah. So that's more or less the first ones usually built with mm -hmm. discrete components. This time in an SMD fashion, okay. so a little bit more modern, but still the same circuitry. And yeah. Um, we would have hoped to have a paper version already in our hands, but it's... Yeah, it, it may come tomorrow, but okay, that's uh, that happens. Uh, next time we definitely have it here on our mm. table and we, we will show you more about the contents. So then we come to the main topic, Matthias, and that's again your part. Yeah, short circuits. Uh, yeah, I have here a lot on, I see here a lot on the table. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, but uh, one after another, short circuits. You have some experience with that. Yeah, bad done. experience. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some, sometimes sometimes they happen, and every engineer that builds, especially his first prototype, um, if it's the first prototype of the project or if it's the first prototype in his engineering career, knows that those things can happen and they may be really, really nasty. From it not turning on in the first place or from giving the magic smoke away and yeah, you have maybe a small fire on your desk mm. you're not okay. have intended to have. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so we like or the idea is to share some experiences, also some corners where they hide and corners really meant in that way um, because with the current or with, with usual THD components you had in the past. They were that big that you could easily spot a sword circuit uh, with your own eyes and in no time. And also if at those circuitries there was something wrong, um, you could easily see what it was. You really mm -hmm. missed component, uh, misplaced mm -hmm. components, something like that. With the SMD things we have nowadays, things get a little bit more nasty. So. Let's have a look at one of the few really, 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 really interesting parts. And yes, um, I would like to show um, what we uh, have here. Now the screen is black. Yeah, give but me if a second. We, if we turn on the, the smartphone, yep. you can see <coughs> we have not now a new camera view. From yes, a, from a smartphone with a gimbal, a little bit and, more. and you can see that Matthias is using a microscope. We also have in our shop. Yep, it's, it's from it, Iron Star. Yep, they are mm -hmm. available in different um, versions, mm -hmm. and this is the luxury edition. I don't have. Mm -hmm. I have at home a smaller one that mm -hmm. is really really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, depending on what you like mm -hmm. to to do and what you like to pay, they are really really helpful, mm -hmm. especially uh, soldering by hand and also in uh, diagnosing uh, short circuits between components. Mm -hmm. Well, we can switch to the Endon Star. Yep. Over. So, the nice thing about the Endon Star it has an HDMI output. So hooking that up to an um, mm -hmm. Beamer or some or, or a big monitor is, is really mm -hmm. really nice. Mm -hmm. 
what we can see here at uh, this circuitry um, is an USB, uh, a micro USB connector. And the micro USB connector, um, yeah, uh, being small, also the contacts you can see, mm -hmm. and this is the, well, you can switch to the full camera view shortly for an for size comparison. I don't have a, so I'm, I'm using one of these Electro right pants. Mm -hmm. This is the tip or the not mm -hmm. tip. Mm -hmm. And if we go over, um, you can clearly see how small this is. Mm -hmm. And the micro USB ports, um, if you do that by hand, are prone to get short circuits between data lines or power and data lines. Mm -hmm. So even worse, the short circuits are not in the in the visible front space. Mm -hmm. But if we tip that a little bit over, usually they are in between the part that you normally can't or can only see with an Android star. And this is really, really nasty. And one of those things where maybe the, the data lines are short and you're wondering why your USB device is fully misbehaving and not working as expected. And first look, um, what, what a lesson learned from the past is um, look at the USB, micro USB connector if you need to install one and see if there are any shorts in or behind the um, connecting parts to the PCB. So that's one of the things that's really, really nasty with the USB. Mm -hmm. You can switch back to the front camera so I can talk a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, with the USB um, C connectors we now have, mm -hmm. that's, that has been uh, gotten a, a lot better mm -hmm. because you have at that point again, through hole pins with a smaller pitch, but through hole, so that's easier to do and also mechanically uh, a lot more stable because the micro USB connector that we have here is just held by the um, surface copper okay. of the PCB. So okay. if somebody mm. is mangling with that one with a little mm. bit of force, um, mm. you easily shear these um, mm. micro USB connectors apart. Yes. So common problem. Um, and also if you are shearing these connectors apart or if you're mm. mangling with them mm. and they get loose a little mm. bit, mm. and they also tend to do short circuits at mm. a certain point. So it's a little bit nasty, mm. but it can get better or worse. And for this, we look at a QFN package. Okay. Um, this is an Atmega uh, 16 USB mm -hmm. and a QFN package. And what you can see um, with the way the soldering is done, you have these small um, soldering tin bubbles at the side. This is where the pads are. And the pads run underneath the chip from the outside. Okay. And what can happen, and this is the nasty thing, um, if for any reason your soldering process or your, the, the applied solder paste was not um, 100%, you can have underneath these little pins um, short circuits. Hmm. And um, there are a few ways you can try to figure it out. And what I can tell, if you are going to measure within your circuitry, you have to be careful because usually you can't do it. Every component you have within the circuitry you will also measure. And this means um, finding a short circuit is not that easy. You can try to do it with a milliohm meter to yes. figure out yeah. in which direction the, mm -hmm. the resistance will change to get closer to it. But with the um, PCB boards and the applied um, masks, it's hard to get to the tray, so you have to um, make it uh, conductive to wrap the mask away. Um, so easier is to get the parts out around the chip where you think the short circuit is and try to get closer to where the fault may be. Another thing that you can do is just by bare brute force heat it again up and add a little bit of solder flux and see if it goes away. So okay. that's the... Or you do it the other way around, you build First, one section of the PCB tested. Yeah, step by step. For example, the power supply, and then uh, see if the rest uh, is yeah. also working at that point. Okay. And yeah, um, so that's one of the things that is with with those things or with the QFN is, is a little bit nasty. The other thing that can happen to get short circuits, um, if this amount of solder paste applied is not the right amount. So you have in the middle. Um, usually in, in a solar pad or a ground pad. Mm -hmm. And if, if there's too much solder paste, your 
um, yep, your chip will float on top of the solar paste. Yeah. And if this cool, if it cools down, move to one or the other side. So tip over a little bit, and this can okay. squeeze the solar paste in a way that it may also produce a short circuit, mm -hmm. or not a, not a, the opposite, not a good contact, mm -hmm. or both. So it's also a little bit tricky. So you have to be carefully um, look at the data sheets, recommended land patterns, um, and also add a little bit of your own ex uh, expertise or your your own feelings about it. To, to the um, amount of solar paste and also to the solar pad uh, layout. What can you do when you have a ball grid array? Because a microscope is not usable then, because <laughs> you have pads under the, the chip itself. What you can mm. do is take out an X-ray machine mm. to look underneath. And this is then something the hobbyists mm. in the end can't do. So, um, of course not. Mm. So BGAs are the little bit more complicated things to, to mm -hmm. do. It's not mm -hmm. impossible and it, it works, mm -hmm. but if you have a short circuit somewhere underneath, it's mm -hmm. get it completely out of the board, reball it, clean the board and reapply it to the board. So they are a little bit more complicated. So you better choose a breakout board where the BGA is already soldered. If you want if you to... Can. Yeah, if you want to do it in a small production or mm -hmm. if you wanted to do it at home and at, at, at a prototype level, yes. Mm -hmm. So it, that might be an idea. Depends mm -hmm. on the BGA, if it's just mm -hmm. six or, or nine balls underneath, mm -hmm. okay. But if you're talking 300, 400 balls, mm -hmm. maybe maybe not, not your first design using that one. Okay. So, and also... Uh, Are there uh, types of sockets for such ball grid arrays um, you not, can use? Mm -hmm. not, not really. Mm -hmm because they are very different? Um, yeah, it depends what you like. Mm -hmm. you, you, they should exist. Mm -hmm. I mean, the CPU socks are mm -hmm. mostly like doing like something like that. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, um, if you have a good soldering process in mm -hmm. place, it um, should be quite common to get good results out mm -hmm. of it. Yeah. But nevertheless, um, yeah, that's one of the things that can happen. Um, we have also the other way, uh, error-prone device or error-prone chips. It's not just the, the USB connector. Um, on this board, you can see the uh, right area, the small Texas chip. Mm -hmm. um, if you sold that by hand, and this is mm -hmm. done by a colleague that really knows what he has, what 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 to do, um, you can easily get solder bridges. Mm -hmm. And we have, with this type of chips, also a small mm -hmm. example. We have mm -hmm. one malfunctioning uh, SDR shield for the Arduino. Mm -hmm. And the reason for that, if you use the Endon star, is quite easy visible. Because here, mm -hmm. in this spot, mm -hmm. you can see small solder tin balls that connect the SC pins. And this can be due uh, to an, too much, uh, or not, not enough solder flux yeah. to, to get it away, or applying really, really, really too much uh, solder tin mm -hmm. to the board. Mm -hmm. And now the question is how to hunt them down. Uh, this can be done optically. Um, with the Enron star or with another microscope at your hand. Um, one nasty thing about this, um, there are some times where you just see a so not, not a real short circuit, but in high current demand. Mm -hmm. What you can do is take out a thermal camera, okay. like, like a FLIR, that's, okay. that's, that's the, the most recognized name mm -hmm. with thermal cameras, there are other cameras mm -hmm. outside. Um, and uh, see which components gets hotter than the rest. Mm -hmm. So you have a good idea what's maybe short-circuited. Um, one thing where you can have a short circuit and not see it from the outside might be elect electric uh, capacitors, for example. Um, just bad, uh, bad day, bad charge, or even just the wrong way around with the polarity, polarity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there's, um, yeah, you will see that they get really, really warm, not hot, but warm, or they explode at some point, so. <laughs> Is this very uh, poisonous, the smoke? Could uh, be. 
it's not let me put it that way it's not, not healthy, healthy. Not, okay. not not recommended to, okay. to breathe that mm -hmm. um, but it's for all electronics that, that mm -hmm. blow up that's mm -hmm. usually not healthy what's mm -hmm. uh, what's emitted at that point mm -hmm. so don't breathe that at home mm -hmm. and yeah so that's that's the things that can happen and um, there are even things that that not from the from the soldering perspective but just even step before from the engineering perspective okay and this is um wrong footprints yes. so if you are doing your footprints be really careful to read the data sheet in a calm and well-timed manner not in a hurry mm -hmm. um we have done or i had this with an um oscillator mm -hmm. Uh, that would be the external, second external monitor for mm -hmm. uh, with yep. this little one. That's an Apricon. And what you really need to take care of is if the pin assignment you can see here is uh, drawn with the view from the top or the view from the bottom. And it can be really nasty if you mix that up. And sometimes it's written in, in some older data sheets really, really small in some corner. So look for that okay. if there's something mentioned like that. Or if you um, using or reusing uh, components, um, be aware that for the footprints on the, the written um, descriptions for an BGA, they might be um, drawn with the bottom view and the other parts, as mentioned here, clearly um, drawn with top view. Okay. So that's something that can okay. really mess up your day. And, of course. Uh, I mean, with six pins, okay, um, but mm -hmm. can get worse at that point. And you have an example on on the desk where something went wrong with the relay. Mm, yes. So. This is, I mean, it's working and it yeah. looks like kind of modern art, <laughs> <laughs> running away relay from yes. the PCB. Yeah. Um, but at that point, um, the footprint that was chosen was for another subtype of that series. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, we had to fix uh, a few wiring, wiring connections. Mm -hmm. If that was uh, turned on, um, it made a short circuit. Okay. And yeah, the input power supply would run into its current limit at the point. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, I said really, really nasty, just mm -hmm. a little bit mirrored, wrong mm -hmm. side, wrong mm -hmm. place, and then... And very annoying that it's not showing up at the beginning, if you... Uh, yeah. Just when the relay switches, that's yes. of course not... not uh, and you're wondering what has happened at mm -hmm. that point, why? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yeah, so footprints um, yeah, are also another thing that mm -hmm. really can be not as pleasant as wanted. Okay. Um, with short circuits also we have another thing that's annoying. Um, you may know on many of those uh, well-priced, I mean not on this one, if you got from the Arduinos maybe also with the STM32 it was a blue pill board, mm -hmm. the Chinese version of that. Um, the low dropout voltage regulator on those things. Um, here it's, an high, uh, it's a high quality genuine one. Um, there they used well priced or heavily cheap parts. Mm -hmm. And yeah, uh, what can happen if you overload the LDO, it will also do a short circuit mm -hmm. at that point, but in a way that it will bridge your input voltage directly to its output. Mm -hmm. So if you're applying 5 volts for a 3.3 volt system, mm -hmm. it will short circuit yeah. and will put 5 volts directly to your 3.3 volt rail. And this is usually the end for all the electronics on that rail, sadly. Yeah, so also something you don't like to experience. And yeah, that's <clears throat> not that nice and not that funny. Yeah, and... Also, if you buy the cheapest PCBs money can get, there is a chance, especially if you have, go over to the Enron star, give me that in focus, 
need to follow the trace. If you have the VR set and if you, you really say, hey, 50 cents for a PCB, that's fine. That's the price I like to pay. Mm -hmm. It might be that these VRs are having not being fully edged free so that you have this really, really small connection that you mm -hmm. can't, that you can't, only can see with a magnifying glass mm -hmm. between um, your mm -hmm. VR and the surrounding area. That, okay. can, that can happen. So, okay. uh, And this is also really nasty, especially if uh, you have a connection between your voltage rail and ground and you're just looking where the heck is it. And if you have removed all the parts and the circuit is still there, um, and this is why you usually want to have a little bit better quality proven PCB. Um, the worst thing you can do at that point, uh, destructive testing, remove the current limiter from your power supply, crank up the voltage if you have all parts removed and see where it smokes so mm -hmm. that you can see where the short circuit may be. Okay. Or at that point use the thermal camera and see where it gets hot. And that's the, the brute force method of getting that done. How many euros do you have to spend for a good uh, thermal camera? Um, if you add a thermal camera to a to mobile phone, the flare um, mm. would be around 260, 290 euros. Mm. And that's already usable? That's usable. Mm. Um, you can still spend more. Mm. So you get more thermal pixels with resolution. Mm. So you can see a little bit better where the heat spot is. Or you can look at one of the older electors with the MT cam, mm -hmm. the small thermal camera. Mm -hmm. So that's but that's more a rough estimation on okay. that one. But for the flare, um, gas work is approximately around 300 euros. Okay. Plus minus, and you can also get the standalone flare cameras or the uh, what have we in the shop? Psycho thermal cameras. They work almost mm -hmm. as as the flare ones as mm -hmm. good. Um, uh, starting from I think four ninety nine five something. Okay. Um, before the dark ages of mm -hmm. chip shortages, um, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure where we are now at the moment, but that's something that can really really save you a lot of trouble and a lot of hassle. And if you imagine that somebody is paid to fix this PCB and uses six or seven hours to find, for example, an, an, a short circuit under a chip where the chip would heat up itself. You can use your finger. Mm -hmm. That's also some indicator. Sometimes it works. If you mm -hmm. can read the manufacturer of the chip in your, on, your, on your finger, then you know that's the right one. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but with the thermal camera, you can sometimes really, really save time mm -hmm. and see what, what has mm -hmm. happened. And also experience from the past, if the manufacturer claims the IC is short circuit proven mm -hmm. and will survive a short circuit, mm -hmm. especially on some um, audio or audio amplifying stuff. Might be that it's not the case. If you do a short circuit, it might just die silently or it will just short your ground and power rail internally. That's also a lot of fun because usually those power amplifier chips have a lot of thermal mass where they can dissipate, uh, dissipate heat. So to find that it's also... Can nice. you find anywhere some hints how a warm a component should get in, in a circuit? Is it written in a data sheet or...? Yes, yes. usually okay. you have a section in the, in the data sheet where it says what, what the approximate mm -hmm. power dissipation should be. Mm -hmm. Also what the amount of current draw should be that the mm -hmm. chip uses. And mm -hmm. um, what you can see, for example, if you have a Raspberry Pi Pico, you plug it mm -hmm. in and that draws at 3.3 volts suddenly uh, for amps, then you know mm -hmm. that's something really, really fishy with that one. Because the data sheet says maximum current consumption for that one should be a really, really a magnitude less than that. Okay. Okay. And so you can yeah, estimate step by step what could be wrong. The other thing that I know can happen that everything is fine, but you still see something like a short circuit. Mm -hmm. And especially if you are dealing with um, DC-DC bug and boost converters in a chain That's combination. That's an interesting subject, yes. Chain combination. This is <coughs> really, really strange what can happen. Yeah. I mean, this is the XL6, this is 6, 9 or 9, I think. 
Um, this is the cheapest common DC DC boost con bug boost, I think even bug boost converter you can find um, on the usual electronic marketplaces. Um, what has happened? Uh, this one at startup uh, with a two watt LED um, load and and GU four for these small LED lamps uh, suddenly draw about ten or fifteen watt on the input stage. Mm -hmm. So a lot more than it should. And what has happened is that the boost converter and the internal DC DC circuitry of the LED. Um, started to resonate at a certain point. So okay. that the um, first stage here um, draw its internal transistor to an, an almost short mm -hmm. low impedance state mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. it tried to start as good as it could. Mm -hmm. So it was really, really unhappy. Mm -hmm. uh, the plastic housing it was built into melt, melted at that point, so this yeah. a lot of heat. Yeah. And after one or two minutes, um, the, the heat in the um, boost stage was that big that it um, got in a, in, a, in, a, in a fold condition that recovered. So right. it might sound a little bit weird, but yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also interesting to see that with the these, these bug and boost stages, mm -hmm. that it can happen, that you can see a short circuit where you shouldn't see one. And mm -hmm. if you, the worst thing is if you put that apart and start it separately mm -hmm. or test it separately, it works fine, but mm -hmm. the combination is... Mm -hmm. Causing really to is it gener in general not to recommend to to uh, switch to boosting stage after another or um, can't you say this? No, it, it really mm. depends on the design. Okay, and, um, I have. But just, it can happen if it, you use yeah. a two-stage approach. Yeah, it can happen mm. that they get in resonance and that mm. they then do mm -hmm. interesting unwanted things. So mm -hmm. you have to be careful with that kind of combination. Can work, but maybe not. They, they get in a, at a point where they are not stable anymore. And this has something to do with the, the switching frequency or? Switching frequency, startup behavior, mm -hmm. um, also the, the timing of those components mm -hmm. um, at the startup. Um, so mm -hmm. there are many, many things that can give mm -hmm. you a not so pleasant day with that mm -hmm. kind of stuff in the end. Mm -hmm. And yeah, not, not easy, but if you know where to look and this is experience that's something mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. need to gather over time or some some mm -hmm. people that mm -hmm. may tell you what they have experienced so that you can benefit from that yes um, yeah that's quite nice so I'm, I'm interesting we have currently a set of viewers if our viewers have experienced something like that please let us know in the chat so we also like to learn from the experience you did so feel free. Or you can write it afterwards. Yeah. For those who won't be able to, to watch us live, maybe they watch us afterwards and just leave a comment in YouTube. Yeah, so that may be also an option yeah. or send just a nice mail to our usual editorial mailing address. Editor so, at elector.com. Yeah, so... If you are able to tell what you experienced, it may help to avoid other people to experience the same on their own, so mm -hmm. that they can may get a little bit, little better time in doing electronics. And yeah, for the short circuits, there's another one um, that we haven't talked about, and this is uh, related to two editions ago. You can do within FPGAs short circuits if you like to. Okay. You can program the internal logic cells that they will do a short circuit within the chip. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And usually it gets hot. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't be, but could be. Mm -hmm. So that's another thing. And for the measurement. And the IDE won't tell you that, that there's a the severe error in your design? Depends how, mm. how, how, how bad you have okay. designed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, measurement equipment to find that, to find the short circuits. As told, um, an, an multimeter is, is a starting point. So you can see where the voltages may be drop or where they go away. Thermal camera or uh, thermal calibrated electronic engineer's finger can also help. Yeah. 
Um, magnifying glasses are never a bad idea for those things. How hot, how hot can it be that it's when it's painful? I think it's too hot. Yes. That, then it's 70 degrees or something or 65 or 60. Yeah. Yeah, mm. if, if it becomes un, unpleasant to touch it, you mm. should have a look what mm. is wrong. If it's a okay. power station, it might be. Mm. Also, security advice at this point. Mm. If you touch something in your circuitry, make sure you're not touching mains or high voltages. Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's mm. not beneficial yeah. for you and for your environment. And yeah, with that said, um, you have maybe uh, the chance to get a milliometer um, to figure out what might be wrong. And uh, the, I think, most important thing is just use your common sense in what it could be. And this is the kind of experience you gain over time. And also, if you do multiple circuits, you know yourself and you know your colleagues. So <coughs> you get a feeling of what can go wrong and what might not have been what, what is in your experience the re reliability when we, of, for example, t uh, talk about um, booster stages, DC-DC converters, when I um, order something at Alibaba or something, are there also short circuits on these PCBs? Could it be? Or also soldering errors? Um, depends if 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 you if you buy from a from a really 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 sketchy source. Mm -hmm. I mean, in in the way than sketchy sense. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, could be mm -hmm. that the production quality of those things is mm -hmm. um, interesting to say at least. Mm -hmm. And so they do not test every device. It it really depends. Mm -hmm. um, there were production runs of those really, really, really cheap boards where you're just wonder, were wondering why it didn't fell apart. Mm. There may be things where there were short circuits inside and mm. soldering was not good, where the O-pins were soldered in a way that mm. you think, hell no. Mm. Um, there's another thing that can happen if you don't do a full test and if you just bump out boards without mm. quality insurance to get as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. um, if you, I don't have an example here because usually I try to fix those things. If you <coughs> look at these small necks, if you have a misplaced chip just that sits between those two um, uh, um, places on the via, the uh, soldering points or the, the uh, footprint mm -hmm. points, it could be that due to the uh, forces applied, capillar forces on, mm -hmm. on the soldering process, that the whole chip will be termed one pin to mm -hmm. the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. So that it's not starting at the first f uh, pin on your footprint, but that the whole chip is one pin moved to the wrong side. Okay. And this is also not that nice. I've mm -hmm. seen that especially with the with the Q of N100 with the bigger chips. This could happen if you do hand hand soldering or if the machine is not working fully okay. as intended. Um, there are also other things um, that can happen, speaking of short circuits. Um, if you do with this components pick and place and if you have um, somewhere diets uh, inside your circuitry, if I do, yeah, should, ah, okay. Mm -hmm the one that's not not there anymore mm -hmm. <laughs> for a reason mm -hmm. um, it could be that these are placed 180 degrees around so with the wrong polarity okay it means your circuitry doesn't work at all mm -hmm. that's not nice but okay or that this uh, diode will um, be in a an, in an conductive state and then you have a short circuit at some point where you don't want to have one for example okay. but you what on the older circuitry was done as, as an input protection, you had a diode okay. inside. So if somebody reverse um, connected the, the power source that mm -hmm. the diode will short circuit that to prevent um, an, an unwanted current flow through mm -hmm. your circuitry. Mm -hmm. And for example, if this, that one was connected the wrong way around, um, it was not so nice. I mean, if the power supply was powerful enough at that uh, point, um, you could easily see where the part was popping out. Okay. There so. we have some reactions from uh, readers. Yep. So, um. <laughs> one recommend touching power stages. Yes, that's a real good recommendation. <laughs> 
So. Yeah, but. And Arie is writing, I had a hair thin short mm -hmm. in a membrane keyboard inside the PCB. Discharging a big cap helped. Mm -hmm. Yep, so no. it, it, it <laughs> went away. Okay. <laughs> the hard way. Yep. Um, and yeah, also usually you, you yeah, as, as Rob said, um, you run a an, an power mm. supply with a voltage and current limit set mm. to, a, to a safe value that you can see if this circuit mm. is misbehaving or not. Usually you don't go full mm. power unlimited. So, yeah. And this is, yeah, everybody gets their, their own strategy mm. in, in getting mm. into this and Um, yeah, then yeah, I said removing the shorts by force if it's on the PCB. Mm -hmm. If it's just a small hair of copper, mm -hmm. then it's gone mm -hmm. at that point. Um, there can also be other nasty things like mm -hmm. just the worst thing you have may just misconnect it somewhere in your CAT tool mm -hmm. ground and VCC. Mm -hmm. Um, somebody mixed up the layers within your circuit and misplaced the via, so production errors can happen. Mm -hmm. and this is, yeah, but that's something you find out really, really uh, soon. Yep. And as I said, the worst things are the shorts with, uh, that, you are, that are under the chip itself, that are hard to see or hard to find. And there's an interesting tip by Rob. I run prototypes from a power supply with a preset current mm -hmm. control, yep. so, of course. It's an option. Yeah. So also, I see from Scott, uh, some camera helped him to find a shorted power plate on a new PCB with a manufacturing error. Yeah. So mm -hmm. these are the, the usual tools you mm -hmm. apply to find those things. And yeah, also getting uh, resistors in front to see if there's mm. a drop or limit, mm. it, uh, limit the mm. current to, to test if mm -hmm. the current draw of the board is okay. Yes. Um, it's not a bad idea at that point. And yeah, manufacturing errors can happen. And especially if you have a complex layout or if you have a manufacturer that has some quality issues. Mm -hmm. It can happen. And I said, if you just pay 50 cent for a PCB for a large one. Yes. Uh, you shouldn't wonder where the price comes from. So. Mm. Yep. And what Ori also said, um, milli ohm meter and a constant current source um, or a current limited source and see where the voltage drops. Um, yes. so it's also really, really helpful. Um, didn't we have a milli ohm meter in the summer circuit guide? I saw something, or, or an upcoming one. The, the problem is, I, I, for, for whatever reason, I, I re get to read the elector before everybody else. I'm not <laughs> sure why. <laughs> so, um, yeah. But I think there's a milli ohm meter coming up somewhere. I've seen yes, something. Yes, there is so, something. So, I think mm. in, in DIYable version. That might be interesting. So look out for that one. Mm -hmm. If I find the article and if I definitely know the, the edition, I will yeah, we give will you. talk in the lab talk yes, again. Definitely. Yeah. So um, time is moving. Yes. So normally we scheduled for half an hour, but okay, for the last shows we always got around an hour and around an hour. That's also okay. Um, yeah. We have, oh, the next lab talk. Yep. Usually we run in a four to five weeks um, interval. Yes. And this one we shortened a little bit. So it would be the 19th August. So mm -hmm. in three weeks, three weeks, plus minus three and a half. Um, same time, same channel. Um, we will talk about the summer circuits. Mm -hmm. um, give you some uh, details about some of the circuits in the magazine. Mm -hmm. um, we will also have a nice giveaway at that stream. So look at our social media channel. I think they also already teased what it is. And um, also, if you want not to miss a lab talk, hit the bell button, subscribe. And if you like the show, 
leave us a thumbs up. If you don't like, leave us a thumbs down. And if you don't like it, it would be really nice to get a small mm. comment what could be improved or what you not like about it. So we can work on that one. I think a small correction, I think it's the 18th, not the 19th. I think the 18th is Thursday. So it's um, definitely on Thursday again. Yep. Uh, I thought I looked that up. In the poster it's it's also says also 18th of August. Okay. Uh, okay, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it's yeah, it's it, yeah, sorry, yeah. my 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 bad. Wrong wrong date. <laughs> it's the 18th of uh, 18th. So um yeah, but my bad. Wrong day. Wrong date. Sorry. And yeah, also there are a few more shows coming up from our colleagues. This is the recording uh, of the engineer's insight from our colleague Stuart Cording uh, in, from the embedded world, from the trade show floor. So a recap and an insight of the embedded world if you were not at the show. Um, at the 11th of August, um, we have a webinar with our colleague Clemens Farns about test and measurement. Yes, so and that's, that's the current issue. You can find it at the newsstand sales. We talked about it last uh, in the last show, it's test and measurement. And yeah, we are now so fast that we make monthly magazines <laughs> in the summer. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, it, um, the webinar is when the, already the next edition is at the newsstand sales. But I think you can find the test and measurement and still in August. So you can have both electors. Um, yeah, and it's test and measurement. Uh, our colleague Clemens is talking about um, yeah, um, not too expensive ways to test and measure something. With, with, an, with, with an Arduino. With an Arduino. So, yeah, yeah, register for that one. Um, if you can't attend live, I mean, it's a holiday season. Um, mm -hmm. Don't worry, um, it will be as a recording available on YouTube uh, a few weeks after. And yeah, that should it be. I think we have now hit all the buttons on the board. Yes, so now I'm familiar with the buttons. <laughs> 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 but you will change it for the next show, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. uh, I, 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 think, okay. I think the layout works more or less. So okay. um, Maybe you can, have, you can make a macro that, that we always have sound when I switch to the main camera. That should be cool because I, I think I forgot it for the, for the second time now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so that's are uh, the upcoming shows. Yeah. Um, the Summer Circuit Guide will be soon at the newsstands also. Mm -hmm. um, the uh, members will get them. Of in the, course, in the automatically, next yes. And yeah, um, also after the Summer Circuits, the next edition is already almost prepared. Yeah. And yeah, f then for this year, there will be maybe one small little surprise that we currently can't talk about, but... We will have an ACE edition, yes. Yes. It's also very interesting. Yeah, and... Maybe in the next show. Yeah, we maybe. Tell more. M maybe. C currently, yeah. <laughs> we, 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 would, we would like to, but... It, well, it, if, if it's finished, we will do, definitely. Yeah, so in the meantime, holiday season is starting or coming to an end, I think coming to an end, depending on the region. So I hope you had a good one. I hope you enjoyed the show and the talk for this time. Um, we will be back, as I said, in three weeks. Mm -hmm. Any last famous words from your side? No. Then have a nice evening. Yes. Bye-bye.